All right, so we did our temperature tower and decided on our temperature. So now we're going to try a bed and layer adhesion and cracking test. So that's this is my favorite test that I made up, which is just a right angle print with some uh, indented or engraved lettering and some raised lettering. And I found this gives great, uh, uh, in one pretty short test, it gives you really good uh, feedback on how well your temperature uh, bed temperature for uh, layer for bed adhesion and layer adhesion because if this joint this 90 degree joint is strong then uh, you got your temperature and cooling dialed in so and if these letters are crisp then again your cooling is good and uh, you have to have good cooling and temperature because there is some bridging here you have to have good cooling uh, settings to get these engraved letters to work so so we'll compile this and export it to an STL and then we'll import it into Simplify 3D and print it up. All right, here's our bed and layer adhesion test in Simplify 3D. So you come over here. For PTG, I use an extrusion multiplier of 1.0. I'm not sure where I got that. I think I was probably the default. And lately, for all my extrusion widths, I've been using auto. Now, I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle for most things. I am using 0.2, and you've seen some of the other videos, but. Uh, previously, I used manual and just set this to 4.0, which was the diameter of the nozzle, which sort of makes sense. But lately, uh, I've been using the auto. If I don't have any small details on, the, say, the bottom of the print, then um, or maybe even the top, you don't really need uh, uh, 0.4 millimeters. So the, everything will come out fine. And in some cases, I'm, when I have details, I'll go back to 0.4. And then for, say, the center of something, I'll use uh, the auto, which is 0.48. So that, that speeds up your prints quite a bit. So Now for the layers, we're using the standard 0.2 millimeter layer height for now. And for temperature, we're using a 65 degree bed temperature, which is I found to be great for PTG with the FlashForge uh, Dreamer NX with the, with the FlashForge sticker. And then for my temperature test, we found that 237 was a good temperature to extrude at. And that's great because that's what we use for all of our PETG. And I like to, it makes life a lot simpler if you're using the same temperatures for each type of filament. Uh, instead of having to switch around. Because then it's easy to make mistakes. And then for cooling, we're going to try 5% fan speed and see how that turns out. So as you saw with the... My previous set of videos on the Polymaker PETG using zero fan speed, which is what's often recommended for PETG, doesn't really work, at least with this printer, in my experience anyway. Okay, so that's our parameters. We'll go ahead and print this. And it's going to take about 54 minutes, which is, that's usually what it takes, 54, 55 minutes, something like that. So, All right, we'll try it out on the printer and see how it turns out. Even when it's up to 90 degrees in the garage here, we leave everything closed up for PTG. All right, let's see how we did. Pop the top off so you can see it better. All right. All right, that joint seems really strong. That's encouraging. Let's see how our bed adhesion was. All the corners are down. The adhesion is good. It came out fine. Bottom is uh, super clean. And the joint looks really good. There's the raised lettering. So, uh, raised lettering is not perfect. The B is a little bit messed up. But let me check on that. The B could be a little bit better, but it's going to affect what we're going to use it for. The indent and lettering looks great. And this joint is super strong. So here's the uh, California Filaments Black PETG, and that's got a strong joint. 
and this is strong too. So our layer adhesion is really good. So that's what we need. So now we're printing something really tall with this. We're trying to print. We're trying to print these things. So this is a really tall. So this takes uh, like ten hours to print. So we're going to try the same. We're going to try the same test by using uh, instead of point two layer lines, which is what we have here. We're going to try point three. Now the, the theoretical limit for uh, a point four millimeter nozzle is point three two. But I don't want to try to push that. So if we can do point three, we can print those tall sides of that tray a lot faster. So we're going to try the same test with point three and see if the layers hold together. All right, here we are in Simplify 3D with our same project for the bed and layer adhesion test. And we're going to change, we change the layer height to point three. Okay, so we're still using everything else. Everything else is the same. We just went to point three, so we're going to go ahead and print this and see if we get the same type of um, layer adhesion and uh, smooth surfaces and stuff that we want. So right, it's going to take about forty minutes. All right, it's done. So this is um, the point three millimeter layers. Seems strong. Bed adhesion is the same, which makes sense. So we're putting a 65 degree bed temperature. I don't know if I mentioned that. Let's check this joint. Still strong, it's nice and flexible. Here's the 0.2 millimeter. This is a little bit stiffer, I would say. Oh, this had time to cool off, so this is still, still warm. This joint is plenty strong, so we're going to be able to print this at 0.3 millimeters. It's going to save us at least a couple hours. In print time so that's that's great all right so now uh, probably gonna pit, print Benchy this is the polymaker Benchy this is the first polymaker Benchy I did uh, with no cooling you can see that it um, <clears throat> it had a lot of remelting issues so I printed it again with 5% uh, cooling came out pretty good but this surface is a little bit uh, blobby here so I think we're going to go ahead and print uh, the hatch box at um, uh, print bench here at 0.3 millimeters and see how it does. Because these sloping sides are similar to the tray we're trying to print, so this is a good test. It takes about an hour. We'll try that next, and then if that works, we'll go full production. All right, I'm being super cautious here, so I decided to do one more test. I did print the last one. A 0.3 millimeter test uh, at 2,800 millimeters per minute speed. Got good, good uh, strength. Uh, but if I can print at 3,000, which is what I'm doing with the California filament, if I can print at 3,000 millimeters per second, I can print two of these trays I'm try I showed you earlier in one day instead of only one. So, so let's see how our strength is. Looks good so far. It's not a big number, 2,800 versus 3,000, but it makes a difference on the margin. So let's see how strong this joint is. It doesn't sound like it. Yeah. Well, it's holding. Yeah, I hear that cracking, see? So that's not going to work. So that's all right. Uh, I'd rather have the, I didn't have the strength, so I can't deal with this. So. All right, so we're going to, um, Go back to 2800. Although I could try it, I think I'll try it again with a with less. Uh, I'll try it again with less uh, fan. I'm using 50% fan, whereas this I'm only using 10%. So I think I want to do this. I'm going to print this again, but go from 50% fan down to 10%, and maybe I'll get better uh, layer adhesion. So let's try that. It's worth it going through all this to because I'm going to be printing a lot of these. So it's worth it to dial it in and. Uh, get the most out of your time and filament. So that's our next test. All right, let's see how we did with 10% uh, fan. Which, like I said, that's how we're printing this uh, black PETG from top of the filament. So. Let's see. That feels better. Bed uh, adhesion is good. Bottom is clean. Let's see how strong it is. I'm hearing a little bit of 
cracking. This is a 0.3, mil, uh, 0.3 millimeter layers. If we go to 5% fan, I'm really having trouble breaking this. I can't get anything out of this. This is when I printed. Uh, this is 0.3 millimeters at uh, 2800. I'm getting a little bit of, teeny bit of sound there. All right, I'm gonna try 5% fan. See if we get rid of that a little bit stronger. All right, one thing to remember is we're pushing the limits. You know, at printing at 0.2 millimeters would be fine, uh, but we're trying to push the limits a little bit, so. Right, that sounds stronger. Let's take it off here. This is 5% fan, and let's see. Yep. I like that. All right, so that's our that's our setting. So 237 for the extruder, 65 for the bed temperature, 5% fan after the first layer. And we're printing this at 3,000 millimeters per minute. So those are the kind of priorities that'll let us uh, print a tray like this in about uh, a little over seven hours. So that's going to work, and we're off to the race. I, I'm going to print. I'm going to go ahead and print Benchy anyway, just to, just to make sure, because this has. This has sloping sides, so I'm gonna print I'm gonna print Benchy at the same parameters as I printed this. Oh, there's 0.3 millimeter layer, which I haven't done that before with Benchy. So this you can see how this comes out with some of the details. This doesn't have a lot of detail, it has some printing inside. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and print this just to make sure that I'm confident of these settings before I print something big like this, which takes over about maybe a sixth or an eighth of the reel. So I'm gonna print this and see how it turns out. All right, we're ready to print Benchy with our final, hopefully, final parameters. So, again, we're using extrusion multiplier 1.0, auto extrusion width, which, which results in a 0 0.48 millimeter width. Each layer we're using 0.3 millimeter layers. That's again pushing the uh, pushing the speed. So the first layer we're printing at 35 percent, and then uh, at a 90 percent layer height, and then 100 percent after that. And then um, temperature, 65 degree bed temperature, 237 extruder, cooling, zero on the first layer and 5% after that. And speeds, 3000 for printing speed. And for PTG, because it, I have had more problems with stringing than with PLA, I print it as, I do the movement at 6000. The printer seems to be able to handle that okay, so. All right, so we're going to try this and see it's going to take 53 minutes. And uh, if it turns out well, we'll go ahead and start printing our actual product. All right, benching is done. Got a little string at the end. We don't care about that. Take this off. Layer adhesion was good. Bottom looks pretty good. Yeah. And there's some little artifacts here like there was on the uh, Polymaker. But uh, I'm not really worried about that. You can see the difference in color now. This is a lot shinier. But like I said, we want it to be a little duller because this is what it's going to be going up against. So we want this, these coins to show up better against this color here. So it's super strong. All the details look great. A little bit of... Uh, Teeny bit of sagging here at the top, probably due to the 0.3 millimeter layer lines, but we're not doing any bridging, so we don't care about that. Tiny bit of stringing, super small. All in all, a really clean, uh, 
clean print. All right, we're off to the races with uh, our main project. Thumbs up for Hatchbox PTG. Okay, here's the finished product. It's a tray used for uh, Sabacc. Um, po it's a Star Wars poker. So there's two pots in Star Wars poker. There's uh, the hand pot and then the Sabacc pot. If you don't get a Sabacc, which is a particular hand in uh, Sabacc poker, um, then the Sabacc the Sabak pot carries over to the next uh, round. So this is with the Hatchbox uh, Go True Gold PETG. So th this is the one I did with, uh, I started using Polymaker. Color's a little bit brighter. Sort of see the difference, the lighting here is kind of tricky, but this is what I did with that. Um, this, this one came out okay. But uh, other ones I had had lots of uh, layer problems. This one was particularly bad. You see this. So this printed very inconsistently for me. It was very tricky to get the parameters correct. Whereas the hatch box, I was able to print this at 0.3 millimeter layer lines and at 3,000 uh, millimeters per minute. So this prints in about seven hours and 20 minutes. And um, this one, the one that, good one I did get out of this one, I had to print at 0.2 millimeters, and that took over uh, 10 hours. So, so Hatchbox is the winner over Polymaker, and unfortunately, I don't really have another use for this. It's too tricky to print with, so I don't really want to use it for prototyping. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to recycle this. So luckily, it is recyclable, uh, so that's a plus. It also comes in this cardboard thing, so... So going forward, we're going to be using the Hatchbox, and we may use Hatchbox for some other projects. We'll see. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.